Stitchy friends, welcome. I'm Judy, Stitching Bunny, and today is Monday, November 6th. We're on our countdown to Thanksgiving and the Christmas holidays. I uh, hope you're all enjoying some nice weather wherever you are. Uh, I'm in like South, South Central Wisconsin, and uh, we've got a beautiful sunny day right now, a little breeze. Our leaves are pretty much off the trees, so it looks like fall. Um, enjoying this. I, I wait all year for the fall weather, so this has really been wonderful. Um, anyway, I have all kinds of things to talk to you about today since I'm probably about, what, two and a half weeks since uh, the last video again. Um, I have to quit saying I'll be back in two weeks because that just never works. I think that jinxes me. Otherwise, I was, you know, on a two-week schedule. But anyway, We'll see what we can do about that, you know, and then we have to talk about the holidays are coming. So, of course, you know, I have a whole new different house to decorate this year and decide where things are going to go. Um, going to make it a little more difficult to get things up, especially after, you know, trying to find all of them that are, you know, boxed in the piles in the basement. So, anyway, let's uh, do what you're here to do. Uh, talk about stitching. Um, if you are a uh, returning viewer, welcome. Uh, if you're a new viewer, welcome to you. Um, I hope you like what you see. Uh, we have uh, kind of a you know fun time. At least I do. I have a very fun time doing these. So I hope that you get a little enjoyment out of it. Um, get to see maybe some new stitchy things. Get to see what I'm working on, what I love, what, what my passions are. Um, and uh, if you're a floss tuber, and I, you know, shoot me your uh, floss tube address, and uh, maybe I haven't watched you. You know, I have to say, though, I should start off with this. I have this little book. I have notes on everything today, guys, so I remember. I have this book that I showed you before, and it says, I love floss tube notebook. And I bought this mainly, you know, because I do sit when I watch uh, you floss tubers. I sit and... Um, I find things, you know, that uh, maybe something I haven't seen or something you're working on that I just passionately have to find either in my stash or, you know, make a purchase, whatever. And um, I like to, you know, you, then I'm scrambling, you know, for a piece of paper to write something down. So I saw this on Amazon and I got it. Of course, I haven't used it for that. Um, but because I do watch so many floss tubers. I started making a list, and I wanted to. I, I don't think I've ever really done any shout outs to the, the floss tubers that I truly enjoy and that I watch over and over and over again. Um, so I thought, well, in the very beginning of the book, it says floss tube favorites. So I thought, perfect. So I start writing down my favorites, and um, actually, it wound up to be almost three pages of favorites. And I know, I know I didn't catch them all. I was just kind of, you know, going through. Um, the favorites that I have marked and all in, in my tablet. And so I, I do want to do a shout out to um, some floss tubers that are probably the ones that I watch the most. Um, I don't have anything, I don't think I have any new people added on here. These are all pretty much the ones I'm familiar with. So what I'm going to do is just mention a couple because three pages, I'd just be reading off names and it wouldn't mean anything to you. Um, but please let me do a, a, a shout out to, you know, some of my absolute favorites. And the first one, of course, I came up with was Brenda, Brenda and the Cereal Starter. You girls are just so cute together. And um, being that you're only a state away, <laughs> I'm hoping someday we run into each other, um, either at Country Sampler, which I'm very, very close to here, or, you know, a retreat or someplace in Illinois, whatever. But we're too close together not to actually, you know, tumble across each other uh, in a stitching store some some day, sometime. But I do totally love you, ladies. I love your floss tubes. I've watched them, you know, I caught up kind of late. You know, I, I only start watching maybe about a year ago. But then, you know, after the first one, I went back to number one and I watched all of yours. So that's my number one uh, that I came up with. Next one is Carol Saltbox. Love you, Carol. Now, you're a little far away <laughs> being in Florida, but you're very close to my sister. So, you know, I could possibly run into you in Florida, too, when I'm down visiting her. Um, love your stitching. Love your walls. I, I just am so envious because I'm not a framer. Um, 
you know, I have boxes of things. Uh, if you haven't watched my video, and I'm sure you probably haven't, um, I have boxes and boxes of, of finished samplers that just are unframed. Um, I've done Eleanor Parr. I've done, you know, it, needless to say, I have a lot of big ones that, that are um, really need to be framed. And I'm going to work on that. That's going to be what I ask for for presents for Christmas and birthdays and that from now on. Um, anyway, love you, Carol. Love your floss tubes. I've watched all yours, too. Um, the third one is uh, another uh, set of ladies that are also very close to me, but in the other direction. They're in Minnesota. And uh, not too far away from me, either. You know, we, this is, you know, doable. Uh, but it's running with scissors, uh, stitching with Jane and Julie. These girls crack me up. I just, I love their friendship. I love their banter. I love how they get along. Um, they're so like-minded, and yet they're totally different people. I, I just, I, I adore you ladies. And I'm thinking that, you know, if you ever want to add a third person, you know, we really wouldn't have to change the name too much. You could still do the running with scissors, stitching with Jane and Julie and Judy. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of like, almost like an omen. So, you know, if you're ever looking for a third party, I love you, ladies. And I hope, <laughs> I hope that I can talk you into watching a few of my videos if you can, you know, put up with my silliness here by myself, just cracking myself up, you know. Um, let's see. I'll do one more. Um, Sarah's Stitchy Spot. Sarah um, and I have talked a little bit, you know, through texts and... Um, I think we might be um, sisters from another mother. Uh, she's, uh, we have an awful lot in common. Uh, we are almost exactly the same age. Um, I, that's kind of where it ends there as, as far as personal similarities, but as far as her stitching and um, her compassion for people, she is such a beautiful soul. Um, I love seeing her laundry basket of whips I don't know how you managed to get that much stitching done. Um, I thought that I pretty much devoted, you know, 24-7 to, to my stitching, but I can't get anywhere near uh, what you get done, although I do have the business too, so that, you know, takes up a lot of my time. But um, I am just so impressed with you, so impressed with your stitching, your personality. Um, again, you know, maybe we'll see each other at a retreat someday. Uh, you're awfully far away from me. We can't uh, add you into the Midwest, um, you know, roundup here. But um, hopefully, um, God willing, you know, we'll run into each other. I would so much love to meet you in person, just like the other ladies that I've mentioned today. So that's it. Th those are my, right off the top of my head, um, the floss tubers that I watch the most. And I'll, you know, I think every week I'll, I'll do a shout out to a couple of more. I just don't want to, you know, overdo that and bore you people to death <laughs> totally um, with just starting off the video. So because I have piles all around me here today, oh, a disclaimer too, please. Um, I broke my cell phone Friday night. I dropped it on the floor. I don't know how many times I've dropped that phone, but I dropped it and I was sitting, of course, in my stitching room and I have a tray table kind of um, setup that I pull in close to my um, sampler chair that I sit in when I stitch. And it's got a square wooden base and just, you know, like one bar in the back. And so I, it's almost like a couch table so I could pull it in close to me. Well, I had went to set my phone down on that table and it didn't, wasn't really paying attention and it wasn't fully on the table and it fell off and it hit that corner of the square base right on, you know, the glass. Just caught it enough to crack the whole thing. And it was, I was still able to turn it on, but, you know, the picture was gone. I, you know, couldn't answer calls because the screen, you know, wouldn't work any longer, all that kind of thing. So Saturday morning, we had the emergency run um, to get new cell phones. So, of course, if I have a new cell phone, Robbie's got to have a new cell phone because they have to be the identical phones because we rely, rely on each other to figure out how to work these things. You know, it's like, honey, how did you do, you know, that kind of thing. And if we have different phones, it'd be banana house here. So we both had to get new cell phones. 
So that ordeal was taken care of. However, I am recording on my new cell phone because it's supposed to be, you know, these fantastic cameras. And so far, you know, it looks really wonderful. Um, but I've had recording problems in the past where the phone turns itself off or my tablet. I tried on my tablet. And so I'm not really familiar with the settings on this um, completely yet since I've only had it for a couple of days. And they could not transfer my information from my old phone to the new phone because I couldn't pull up my apps. You know, that smart switch thing that they can do, which I did on my husband's, and everything transferred on my husband's perfectly within about five minutes. Mine, on the other hand, only was able to get my pictures, my contacts, and that was pretty much it. Um, so now I'm having to go in one by one, figuring out what I need as far as apps and trying to get them back in there. I have no passwords. My passwords are gone. Um, so anyway, long story short, I'm on a new phone. I'm hoping this works. Um, if it cuts off fast, <laughs> I'll come back. Either that or just delete it and start over. I hope I don't have to do that. Um, but, you know, picture-wise and all of that, it seems good. Um, if it's kind of dark, uh, let me know, please. You know, it doesn't look bad to me, but my eyesight is, is, is very bad. Um, I have, everything is dark to me. Uh, I have glaucoma, so I have, you know, darkness anyway um, in my vision. So, please let me know if it doesn't look good, it doesn't sound good, um, if there's something else I can do to, to enhance it, because this is a good spot for me to record. So, enough of that stuff. Let's move on to stitching. Um, I want to do my off-the-wall segment first because I have two pieces sitting here, two frame pieces, and I'd like to just get them off this table so that I don't have any more accidents. So let's do this one first. Um, I have two today. I pulled these two because for some reason they were sitting um, in a room not boxed with the other ones, and they kept getting bumped. And you know, So anyway, I moved them down here to my room to pack them away with the other ones until I decide where I'm going to put them in the new house. Um, so I just picked these two up, you know, no particular reason, but that they were virtually available. Um, so this is the one that I did. This is from 2000. And this is a Maureen Appleton Heart's Content over one um, piece. I might have a little trouble with glare here. Um, my three big windows in my cold studio here are behind uh, the camera. So uh, it, it's the brightest, nicest spot. So we'll see what we can do about the glare. But anyway, this is from 2000, and it says, Good company is a great comfort. And I just, I've done a lot of Maureen's pieces, but I loved the sentiment on this one. I loved the design. Let's see if I can get it in here. Uh, let's see. That looks like about as close as I'm going to get it. But it's got beautiful, like an ivy vine around it, and those two little angels in the, the squares up on top, and just really a, a pretty delicate piece. So that's 40 count on over uh, one strand of silk over one thread. And with Maureen's kit, she provides all the silk. So it's always a combination of maybe Gumboots, um, Gloriana's, um, you know, whatever, you know, is her color palette for that particular piece. And she'll mix it. Um, it even looks like maybe some over dyed. This was done, you know, so long ago, 23 years ago, that I don't really remember. Um, but it does seem that there, it's, it's even picking up some you know, over dye um, silks in here. And right underneath the tree, let's see if I can get that part in there. Uh, the tree, there's a little acorn in the box there. So this is also very fall to me, which, you know, is my favorite. So that's good company. I said this one is not because this other one is bigger. Um, this is Phoebe Hughes. And... Uh, let's see, it's from the City Stitcher, and it looks like this one was also stitched in 2000, and I did this one because I am such, let me see if I can move back a little bit here, I am such a Christmas person, and one of my favorite things is Christmas trees, I go absolutely nuts so over Christmas trees, I put up about 13, at least I did in my old house, we'll see how it works here, um, but I put up 13 fully decorated trees all over the house, most of them in the living room. And um, my second favorite thing is string of light bulbs. Uh, I love that um, little motif, if you want to say. Um, I, anything that has, you know, the little light bulbs on it. Um, since I am so old, um, I remember the big 
see seven bulbs that we had on our real Christmas trees back when I was a little girl and, and the tinsel and, and that's that's how I want to remember Christmas um, with my family that you know we no longer I mean for years it's just been Robbie and I with our doggies um, you know that celebrate um, my family is dwindled to just my older sister her daughter and her family um, and they're all in Florida, so we just, you know, it's not the time for travel. It, it's not, you know, my sister and her daughter are three or four hours apart in Florida, so, you know, they've traveled to each other, but traveling to the Midwest, it, you know, just isn't feasible. So, anyway, we talk, but, you know, we just can't spend the holidays together. So, something like this just makes me so happy. And, you know, even though it's not a Christmas piece, it reminds me of Christmas, so... That's fine. Um, I'm going to set these on the floor here and hope I don't kick into them. I have piles kind of all over here, I'm afraid. Um, I have so many things accumulated and so many different things that I kind of extended out on my ironing board next to me here. So I might have to stop here or there to um, grab a pile, um, but we'll see how it goes. So bear with me with that, too, and hopefully I get the right... Let me move up a little bit. I get the right um, button to push to pause and not stop the video because I've done that too. Well, let's look first. Um, I have my book of days. And since it's been uh, last month since I recorded, I was going to say about two and a half weeks, I guess. It was still October. I'll show you my finished October. Um stitched every day or worked on stitching bunny bags every day. So I, I pretty much kept up with it. I'm, I'm really having a good time. This is uh, my second year that I've done this. And first year I was kind of, you know, I kept up for a while and then I kind of fade for a while and all. Um, but uh, I'm really enjoying it this year, especially doing the floss tubes because I keep a lot of my information in here, stuff that I, you know, had scattered somewhere, but when I needed to, to find the information, it wasn't around. So this is really handy, and I have my new one ordered, too. It hasn't come yet, so I can start playing with it, but um, it is on order. And this is my November I just set up. So, of course, we had to have still all the fall stuff, pumpkins, squirrels, everything that would match. And our wedding anniversary is the 27th. It's going to be 29 years for Rob and I. So that's the only one that's going to celebrate uh, sticker on it. Um, the 23rd, let's see, did I put anything? I didn't put anything on Thanksgiving. I'm going to have to do that. Rob and I got married Thanksgiving weekend um, 29 years ago. So Thanksgiving actually is a week earlier to me this year. Um, so it gives us an extra week of Christmas to have my decorations up, although usually I could run into February without any any uh, problems. I don't I love it. So it stays up until I'm ready to take it down. But I do like to keep my new starts. I always post them here um, rather than try to look for, you know, the day on the actual calendar. So I do mark that. And if I have any finishes, I'll also put them on the side here. So that's my book of days. Then let's see what else we have. Oh, um, I guess we'll get into my actual stitching. I do have an FFO um, that I'm very proud of. And let's see, oh, it's, it's way over there. I'm going to have to pause it and get it. It's not on the, it's on the cutting table. So hold on just one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I think that worked. I didn't stop the video. So this is my one FFO. And um, if you're returning uh, viewer, you've seen some of my, especially my last couple of videos, um, I'm doing a catch up of what I like to consider ancient whips. Um, things that I came across in our move that um, I started years ago, um, some still in, you know, 19 whatever, um, or early 2000, and have just for whatever reason were put aside. And um, when I boxed everything up to move it here, I found a lot more than I thought I had. So anyway, I categorized all of them. I went through everything I had. I, most of them had the floss with them, you know, the Obviously, the linen, the chart was with them. If not, if they were separated, I did find almost all of them. So I think I've come up with a little over 30 some uh, that are ancient whips that I put as much information as I could in this particular catalog that I'm keeping of them. And um, I am one by one working on them this year. This is the second, 
second one, I believe, because I the first one I finished was um, a Blackbird Halloween one that just had one little tiny band on the bottom to finish, which I did. Um, this one had a very large portion of it finished, but it's a very large piece. Um, but it was also, uh, because I am a seasonal stitcher, I love to season or stitch in the season that I'm in or holidays, whatever, um, that's current. Um, so this happened to be a, a fall and autumn piece, so it worked out perfectly. Um, one of my viewers suggested that I kind of take some of the pieces that have the largest amount of work done on them um, and finish some of those off first to see some, you know, accomplishments, see some finishes. And that's worked out wonderfully. Anyway, this is what I worked on. It's Carriage House Sampler, uh, Autumn at Hawkrun Hollow. And it's just, I know you've seen it. This has been out for quite a number of years. I think maybe 2010. I don't see it right here on the back. Um, but I believe that's what it was. And I've taken the piece out of the, the bag that was tagged that had all that information on it. But I think it was 2010. And um, I was had completed all the way down to this square and this one was half done. So it was this half square and these four that I've done within the last maybe two months, I guess I was working on this. So um, it's now completed, it's now an FFO. And this is gonna be, um, we'll start at the top. <laughs> this is a very big piece as you know. This was done on 40 count sand dune i believe lakeside yes sand dune and with all the called for mpi silks so here's my the very top and so then all of this was let me get my little i need to keep touching this that way all of this was done oh, there we go <laughs> all of these blocks were done this one was done oh no i'm sorry this one was half done. You're, you're, it's backwards to me. So I'm, this one was half done. I finished this one. And then this one, the witch, the, the witch, the cemetery, the turkey, and then the coming home for Thanksgiving um, have all been finished since. So let me move these up. Now that you've seen those, let's see if I can do this. And it's also helpful to have a big chest. Because you can lean stuff on here and it works really well. <laughs> I'm like a I'm like a board. Okay, there we go. So that was what I needed to really get finished. It's done. I am so proud of myself. I think if I remember my notes correctly, um, I might have started this like in 2013. It, it's somewhere around 10 years. Um that it is thing was in progress but it's done now um i was joking with my girlfriend that was here the other day we stitched together my friend valerie um lives close by and she comes to my house on thursdays and we usually spend the day we have i make lunch for us so we have lunch first and then we stitch for as many hours as we can tolerate um and watch you know episodes of outlander because she's never seen outlander so i'm playing that for but anyway, I was joking with her the, when I showed her this on Thursday. I was telling her I was fine. And she just, she's totally in love with this piece. And she says, this one you have to frame. I don't want to hear any excuses. You have to frame it. So I told her, yeah, well, jokingly, I says, yeah, I think I'm going to put up a, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, oh, GoFundMe page <laughs> for me to <laughs> finish my, you know. Please help me finish my samplers. So anyway, I was just kidding. But yes, so that's my FFO. Oh, no, I'm sorry. FO. Not fully finished. Excuse me. I'm still throwing things on the floor here. Okay, so that was my finish. My only finish, I think. Um, I had some little ones, uh, little ornaments or, or tinier things that I wanted to finish. Um, fully finished. That didn't happen. Um, so I guess at this point we're on to whips. And since we were just talking about ancient whips, I'm going to show you first the new ancient whip that I picked to start working on now. And I just picked this up yesterday. Um, I got it all together with, you know, this, the flosses again and stuff. So I really didn't have um, 
a lot of time to do any stitching on it, although I did put in some stitches yesterday so that I could date it that I started yesterday again. Um, and it just so happens to be, how convenient is this, Christmas at Hawthorne Hollow. <laughs> so here's the chart. That's that. And I think I might have some information for you on this one. Nope, I don't. I thought I saw somewhere. You know, it, it is in my um, my project starting, and I didn't bring that little book down. Anyway, it's not really that important, and I can probably tell you the next time. that I'm going to try to put this one in front of this. Bear with me a second here, because these big ones are so hard to see. Unless we have, there, I think that might work pretty good. Let me do this, and let me do this. How's that? So again, I really have, this is, you know, a different uh, setup. It's, it's still the 12 blocks, um, but there are three across and four down this time instead of it being the three, um, what was the other? Oh, two across was the other one, and six down. So this is what I have. Let me back a little bit. This is what where I am, where I left off. So I have eight blocks of the 12 done again. And what I put in yesterday, I'm sorry, I'm making this really very difficult for you to see here. Hold please. Okay. What I started putting in yesterday is just a very, 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 I'm gonna, you know, have to put the black block in to fill in. So that's what I'm working on uh, right now. And I think what I'm going to do too, again, I don't know, so I, because, let me get rid of this board. Because I um, started this so many years ago, um, I've lost my train of thought, what I was going to tell you. Oh, well. Oh, I think it was about the blocks of the, the, at the fabric. On the autumn one, um, I had a lot more spare fabric on the top than I did on the bottom. And I must, obviously, I'm the one that miscalculated somehow, but I was able to get um, those the bottom blocks of that one in with maybe about two and a half inches to spare. So it can be framed. This one, you know, I, I it looks like I definitely have enough, but I am going to put in all the other blocks first before I start filling in that that number nine so that um, I know I'm okay I mean I'm gonna finish it anyway even if I had to leave those last three off I would finish it uh, but it does look like I have enough but I just start framing this block here and so I'll, I'll put those in so we'll see how far we get by my next video whenever that may be so that's going to be my next work in progress or it is my next whip on the uh, ancient whips. So that's Christmas. Okay. Then I have, um, I think, one other whip. I haven't done much on this. And, and I'm very disappointed in myself that I haven't picked this up again. But I, I for some reason, um, you know, with it, uh, the day after Halloween, I start thinking Christmas. And... Um, I'm in my mood to start, you know, doing my Christmas presents. I make ornaments usually for my sister every year. Um, my um, sister's daughter, my niece, and then her three children. She's got two little girls and a boy. So I like to make something for their tree, too. And they're still at the uh, very destructive age. <laughs> they're all in school. They're all, you know, they're not little, little. Um, but they are quite a little handful. And... Uh, they take things off the tree. I used to do that too. I remember how I used to take the ornaments off and play with them. And my mother would just, you know, roll her eyes. And I mean, there's only so much you could do. There were four of us. So, you know, she just, I think, kind of threw up her hands and, you know, as long as we didn't break anything. And because uh, everything was glass back then too. Anyhow. Um, so I started working on my ornaments. And uh, I've kind of put aside my big things, the, the big things I, I wanted to finish autumn at Hawk Run so badly that when I did pick up stitching to sit down and do some serious stitching, I wanted to do that. But now that that's finished, I do have a Christmas one running, but I want to I want to work on this one too. 
So I am going to say this is, is going to be also be in my future plans. I am going to work on this one more uh, before my next recording. This is Elizabeth Lincoln, 1815, by Northumberland Sampler House. And this is a stitch along um, that started September 1st, I believe. Because I know she had a little note on here we couldn't open until... I think it was September. It must have been September 1st because it wasn't October 1st. Anyway, so this is it. Uh, this is her Christmas sampler stitch along for this year. And um, the reason being the two reindeer on the bottom both have red noses. So with the color combinations of the beautiful sampler and the two red nosed reindeers, it's a Christmas sampler. And we're going with that. So this is where I am. So I haven't put a lot of time into this. But I love it. I love it. Um, I am a reproduction sampler lover. That that is my passion. And um, I the delicacy of this, the colors in this. I just there's nothing nothing about this not to love. Um, there was what there is one other one I'm working on. I didn't bring down because that one never even came out of the bag. I don't think for the last video. So. I didn't bother bring that one down. Um, but that's also a, um, that one is an exclusive, and I, and I believe there's a stitch along going on with that one too. Um, that's from uh, Wild Iris Naps. And that one is, again, a beautiful, absolutely beautiful reproduction sampler um, that Christ, I believe it's Christina uh, charted for, um, was it Hobby House? I think that might have been exclusive for. But um, it's just, it, it's like the perfect sampler, which is how I feel this one is. But that one, this one doesn't have a house. That's the only thing this one is missing. The one by Christina has got two red houses on the bottom. And if you haven't seen it, I, I don't think it's readily available yet or anymore. I don't believe that, you know, the exclusive is still available or, you know, it hasn't been released, I don't think, you know, publicly yet, yet. But if you get a chance to uh, go on Christina's website, Wild Stylist Naps, or, you know, her Instagram, Facebook, I'm sure she has um, listings, maybe even her Etsy shop, which I think she has an Etsy. Take a look at that sampler. And it's Mary, I believe it's Mary Gibson. You will, you'll, you'll notice it if she has it shown that way. It's, that is the perfect sampler. But anyway, this is my work on this one, and this will get some love. Um, it's going to be sitting with my other one. Uh, I'm going to try to switch back and forth because, you know, when I look at this one, I love it just as much as, as I love the uh, Hawk Runs, and I want to work on it just as badly. So um, I, sometimes I, I have a tendency to kind of flip back to my monogamous stitcher habits, which I still love because I, I love to see progress. Um but I have too many whips to do that, just, you know, stick mon stitch monogamously. Um, these were the, the sampler, the colors for that particular sampler I just showed you. I should have held them up when the sampler was out, but look at these. <laughs> these yummy colors. Just a beautiful piece. Just beautiful. Okay, I have to kind of lean over uh, to my ironing board and grab some things. So I'm going to try to stop this again, and I'll be right back. Okay, I did it again. I'm so proud of myself. Okay, let me start with some of these little little items here that I can move out of the way. I got my monthly um, goodies from Be Stitch Me. I'm in the Silk of the Month uh, club and also her 40 Count Linen Club. These are just, um, these are the colors for October. Just just those gorgeous kind of neutrals and I, I kind of like stuff like this because I don't you know I have a tendency when I'm buying separate skeins of floss just you know to try something try a new floss I have a tendency to go for those you know bright ones and variegated ones and you know just the colors that normally appeal to me and then when I am looking for browns and tans and grays and um, different shades of, of blacks I don't have a lot to choose from so you know this is just a wonderful thing for me. And and being that they're silks, oh, 
I'm in heaven. Uh, this is beachy. Almost looks like, yeah, it does look like a sand color fawn. This time we have sandbox. That's cool. It looks like what sand it does. <laughs> Gingerbread. We're getting into the holiday season. And espresso. And I'm a coffee lover. So, you know, those just all had my name on them. But I do. I absolutely love this. I love being in that club. Uh, can't say enough about these stitch me that are Silks and their linens. Absolutely gorgeous. Then this is my fabric of the month. And I wanted to take this out and show you closer because I also get um, uh, fabric of the month that is um, fabrics by Stephanie. That's what that, that club comes with. And um, it, it was kind of funny because I think these came like a day apart. And I thought, oh my goodness, those colors are so similar. But they're really not. Uh, this one is called Nightshade. And this is the Be Stitch Me. And... Oh gosh, that's really good color. I'm liking this new camera. It was kind of worth the investment. <laughs> it's unbelievable what cell phones are on now. And I don't have an iPhone. I have an Android. I have Samsungs and my husband and I. And uh, yeah. But they're still terribly, terribly expensive. Now that's that's this one. And it, it looked kind of... Um, bluish at the time. I don't remember if this one came first or second. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm just saying that, you know, when the other one came, I thought, oh man, that looks really similar. But then you look at this one from uh, from Stephanie, and this is called Snowdrift. And I should have had these out, but things were sliding all over, so sometimes it's hard to do. And this is a true baby blue. The other one has a, now when I put it up against it, the other one has a lot of purple in it. And this Again, the camera is picking up beautiful, accurate color. Kind of matches my sweatshirt. Now, this is the Be Stitch Me one next to it. And you can see, even though, you know, I thought, oh, gosh, that's real close to the other one. They're, they're not close at all. So I am never disappointed with these fabric selections. And I always can find something, something to stitch on these. I just, I'm so thrilled with that. The only other one that I, I can't... Um, to say that I wish I could say I get fox and rabbit. Um, I do have the oh, I'm sorry, I do get fox and rabbit now because Gayron uh does the fox and, and rabbit on their um their fabric of the month, so I was finally able to get into that one. So I do get theirs because I love fox and rabbit too. Okay, now as far as regular charts and thingies, um, I do want to show you, let me get this chart out first because this again has um, slippery things. Sorry, that's fine. Excuse me, let me make use of my ironing board here and move these things out of the way. So bear with me one second. Okay, that should do it. Gives me a little more room. Now this is from Hobby House Press. And this is the second piece um, to this series. Um, the first one was a drum. Actually, uh, they have the sampler, and the sampler is going to be reproduced, but before the sampler is released, um, they're releasing these pieces, and I'm not sure if there'll be another or if the third piece will be the sampler, but this was the drum that's taken, you know, from the actual sampler, and then now we have the, uh, what do they call it, the scissor holder. And it's Mary Alcorn, Alcorn, El, it's A-L-L, so it could be Alcorn, 1764 Sampler Series. And it comes with a linen. This is being done on 40 Count Thornfield by Needle and Flax. So that's that end. <laughs> Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? The only problem being, what pair of scissors do I put in? <laughs> I'm also a big scissor collector. I have been for years um, because I have been stitching for so, so long that the embroidery scissors are, you know, have always been my thing. But I'm also a quilter, so um, unfortunately now I'm getting into the shears and it's just, it's horrible. It's horrible, all the sicknesses that we have, but isn't it fun? This is just like the best. Okay, I wanted to move that scissor holder out of the way so I didn't drop it because I'll break the wood. Um, this is, uh, most of these, 
I think were from shops, but this particular one I know was off of Stash Unloading, uh, the Facebook group, which I love. I'm always on that one, or Samplers, Samplers something. Anyway, um, this is Oakleaf Manor Pin Keep Drum. This is by Stacy Nash, and it was designed exclusively for Country Samplers Girls Club. And I didn't get this. I wasn't in their club at the time um, to get these. Dark. I don't know why I do that. You know, I keep saying, well, you know, I just live down the street from there almost. I, I mean, it, it's it's a little farther than that. But, you know, it's a half hour, 45 minute ride down a country road here, you know, to get to Country Sampler um, for me. Even, you know, old house, new house, you know, it still is not far away at all. Um, so I always, you know, kind of tell myself, well, you know, and I worked there for years besides. Um, well, you know, I really don't have to get into the clubs. What if I don't like the piece? You know, I can always go to the sampler and, you know, they'll have it out and I can just pick it up there. Well, you know, every time I see one of their club pieces, uh, that somebody's gotten, I just, I could just kick myself. They're just, you know, they're exclusives. They're beautiful. The things, you know, sometimes they have the um, color conversions that Jeannie does, Jeannie and the girls. I, I believe it's Jeannie usually because she's the one that just has that fabulous color concept and, you know, has her own actual quilting fabric lines, several of them. Um, but, you know, I leave the color choosing to um, people that have the... Uh, knowledge of that type of thing and are good at it. So anyway, um, so she'll usually, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that she's going to use all the colors. Sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't. But um, this, and then it's the way she kits them. Um, what can you say? You know, the majority of us stitchers are little girls. And we might be older little girls, but we're girls. And who doesn't love to get a kit like this where everything is in there? It's wrapped so beautifully. It's presented so beautifully. Um, so anyway, making a long story short, I did join one of Jeannie's clubs this year. And because I am the sampler stitcher, um, I'm not sure if Jeannie has, you know, several going this year or not. I, I was particularly interested in this one. Um... It's this year it's called the Threads of History Club. So it is, you know, samplers and it's older samplers. Um, so I did join. I've gotten my first one. And oh, this year too, um, it seems that she's adding newer designers. You know, she does have her standard, you know, you can't beat the designers that, that Jeannie picks. I mean, everything. I just love everything. Um, but this one, uh, this year she's adding some new designers. And for the first time... We have a kit from her that is running with needles and scissors. Sylvia, um, she designed it. I think this is, let's see, how does she quote this? I was going to say if, if it's a, um, I don't believe it's a reproduction. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves for one moment. Well, let's see. While I'm back here, it's on 36 Count Heirloom by Needle Bling Designs. Uh, it's Classic Color Works, DMC, and Weeks Dye Works. Stitch counts 196 by 169. And I'm doing mine on 40 Count. And it's Milady's Courting, Courting Conundrum. And this is number one. And this is... If this is um, taken from a reproduction, that, that, let me take this out of here. This is too pretty to be dealing with glare. If you can deal with a little crinkling noise, so you can see the chart, it's worth it. There you go. Uh, there, that's probably about the best. Got some neat, funky people and course the house but it's a yellow house I love that my old house was a yellow house we used to call it the cheese castle the trees and the you know beautiful baskets and the, the flower motifs just simply gorgeous and then the little small pieces you know the items that she took out of the sampler and made 
the little smaller items. Just absolutely gorgeous. I was going to see if there was a closer picture on the inside. Oh, here we go. We have an answer. Here is the original sampler. So it is, it is a, almost a, from what I can tell, just looking at it quick like this. Boy, it sure looks like an absolute reproduction, doesn't it? She nailed this. Doesn't look like there was a lot of damage on the sampler at all. It looks really in good shape. But she did a fabulous job on this. Just, whoo. So, uh, this also enters into um, my plants. And I, I do have a couple of items planned for the rest of uh, November. Uh, my Christmas stitching for December and, and beyond. And then a couple of things, hopefully, that I'd like to pick up next year. And this is going to be one of the very, very first. This might be my New Year's start. Um, you know, that is always subject to change because, you know, squirrels, um, you know, I love, love, love this. But, you know, if something comes across sooner that has, you know, at the time maybe has more meaning, whatever. You know, it doesn't take too much of an explanation or a reason for me to, to switch gears real quick. Um, but this definitely will be in, if, if it's not my New Year start, it will definitely be, um, you know, early year 2024 start. I just absolutely love that. Okie doke. Uh, <laughs> trying to make things not fall over here. The ironing board was a good idea, but these charts are so slippery, so slippery. Okay, let's do the little ones here first. Um, I think that these are all from from shops. Uh, there's a few here that probably are, are from Stash Unload. Um, this is from New York Dreamer. It's Home is Where the Fabric and Floss Are. And this is by, is it Azia? E-Z-I-A? Gladstone? Not familiar with the first name, but isn't that cute? Anything that's going to fit in my stitching room that says stitching motif, stitching versus stitching anything, um, usually comes home with me. So there's that one. And this is, looks like almost all DMC, there's a couple of um, two or three weeks dye works in there, but they also give you the DMC alternative even for those three. So I thought that was really cute. Uh, this is a newer one by Stacy Nash, Farm Market Pink Keep. And I kind of looked at this, and it, it didn't dawn on me at first that that's, it's in a house. <laughs> Until I actually saw, um, I think I saw the, a sample. I didn't see it in person. It was on somebody's floss tube or somebody's Facebook or something. And it dawned on me that that was a house. Oh, my God, I have to do that. A house with the pumpkins and the spool with the pumpkins growing out of it. And, of course, there's a little dog. Now, oh, my little black dog is gone, but I do have my little Rosie, so I just have to change her to yellow, which would not be distracting on there at all. I think that would be perfect. So there's that one. Uh, this one, I, I collect all of hers. This is Waxing Moon Designs, and I love her trios. I love her whimsy um, in these and her D. I mean, usually... I'm not a person that likes the little whimsical, you know, cutesy kind of stitching. I'm more, as I said, I, I'm a dedicated sampler lover, but, and I do stitch other things, but usually if it's kind of cartoonish or too cutish, um, that isn't me. Um, I don't have kids and, you know, so that never really uh, appealed to me. Um, but this particular, I don't consider this cartoonish or anything at all, but it, it's just, it's cute instead of it being more classic. They're so cute, but they're so detailed. I have stitched several of these trios, and uh, this is her latest one, number 219. It's Autumn Barn Trio. And living in Wisconsin, you know, we love our barns. There's even barn quilts on these, which just make me absolutely giddy, because I love doing the, the back road trips here in Wisconsin, and there's actually a um, I don't know if it's a website or um, I know there's a listing of an area where you can take a driving tour yourself of all the barn quilts in that area. <laughs> it, it is just, it's the neatest thing. It, it's just very, very cool because I am a quilter too. Um, it's just me. But this is the detail on these. 
they're just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So this is her latest, and that's on my to-do list too very soon because it's autumn. And, you know, I, I like to have something small going all the time. It's just a you know little something rather than pulling out one of my big samplers if I have 15 or 20 minutes that I can sit and stitch if I'm waiting for something. I'm waiting for the laundry to finish, that kind of thing. Um, I like to have a little thing handy. Right now is that I'm working on, on Christmas ornament gifts, so that's keeping me busy, but I really would like to fit in one or two of those if I could. Uh, this I did buy on Stash and Low because I missed it. Um, I have the winter one, but I didn't have the autumn one after I went back and looked again. So this is Autumn Gatherings by With Thy Needle and Thread. And I love the way this is finished into a basket. It looks like it'd be a real quick stitch, where some of hers are, you know, quite stitch heavy. This one doesn't look bad at all, and uh, just love it. Just, just love, again, anything autumn. Now we're moving into Christmas, because the Christmas charts are out. Um, Jeanette Douglas, this, this is, uh, these are, every one of these is absolutely beautiful. And, and again, these are just classy. Um, I put up all of those Christmas trees. One of them, you know, being, um, the one that's strictly cross-stitch ornaments. And it's a five-foot tree, so it's not huge, but it's starting to get a little crowded. So I'm going to have to bulk up to a bigger tree, I think, um, because I'm getting more and more ornament stitch. But anyway, this is... Christmas cheer pin pillows. And I love the, I mean, the, every one of these I would stitch. Every one of these. And again, not real, real stitch heavy. You know, doable. But enough to make them classics, To Oh, I love things like this. And she just knocked this out of the park for me, too. So those are definitely going to go in my pile of let's do smalls. Um, I do have a, a separate container. Usually once I kit these up, I'll throw them, you know, in a, I have a real big, one big project bag and um, I can just flip through there and, and pick out something. And it's, you know, everything is in there and uh, keeps me, you know, my hands busy and instead of eating something. Um, this is Christmas, Christmas trees and stitching, please. Again, stitching, Christmas, my loves. Christmas trees and stitching, please. Primrose Cottage. Look at how cute that is. I like the little tree coming out of the thimble. We've got our scissors and thimbles down here. Oh, there's even a couple of flying geese quilt block. Uh, very, 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 very cute. That's a must stitch. Um, hands on designs. Enjoy the stitch. My name was on it. Isn't that great? With the cute little pin cushion, you can make or make that into a little ornament. That'd even be cute to just hang uh, in my stitching room. I have all kinds of doorknobs and I have several, you know, like uh, barrister book cabinets, you know, they have the knobs, the two knobs. And so I'm, they're just loaded with stuff and I switch things out all the time. So that's a must stitch. This I think I bought off the secondary market too. Um, I don't remember even seeing this one come out to the Acorn House Pin Drum. And so this was, oh, this was a cute, I did buy this off the sketch one. Again, here with the, the crinkles for guys, everyone, all my stitchies friends. Um, oh, this was a dying to stitch kit because the lady left the, that I bought it from left her receipt in there. So it came with um, the linen and, oh, everything. I didn't even open this up yet. Um, the little nubblies, the little baby pom-poms and the floss and the backing fabric, a needle, everything. And I really don't remember see, seeing this, so I wonder, let's see if there's a year on this lady's receipt. Oh, it's from 2017, so it's not a brand new one. But I love this. I love this. I keep saying I'm going to get into um, finishing up some things that I want to make into drums. In fact, that was another whip I didn't bring down. I'm working on um, Tiny Town, the harvest one. And I'm about three quarters of the way through with that. And that was going to be uh, my first finish and finish into a drum. And that one kind of got sidetracked and switched into a different um, bag, probably after my last floss tube. And... Um, for some reason, it, it had just slipped my mind, and I didn't pick it up to work on that, and that's almost done. So, 
Um, I have to resort my things, but that was going to be my first drum because I've seen so many of those made into a drum, and they're so cute. Or to do something like this to get another spool and switch them out. I, I have a couple more that I haven't stitched, but um, to switch them out for the seasons, holidays, you know, that kind of thing. This I have. <laughs> this is going to be um, a November finish. Come higher, hell water. Um, Pineberry Lane, Fruits of Our Labor, and this is not a new chart either. This has been out since 2017. But every time I see this, <laughs> with the gun and the turkey, <laughs> um, I'm in Wisconsin, and, you know, there's hunting season here. But I just think that this, first of all, these people are so funky. They're so funny. I just love her people. And, I mean, even to do, you know, Mr. and Mrs. here, you know, Rob and Judy, um, the two pilgrims, that, that kind of looks like us, although... I don't know if Robbie agreed. Oh, yeah, he had a hat on. Rob usually has his hat on. Um, but that gun and the turkey and the, you know, the hunter. Got to <laughs> and, you know, what is even funnier on this chart is, you know, the two of them that are on the top. He's pointing the gun towards his wife and the, and the other. Uh, I, you know, of course, I, I'd spot that, but I. Really cute. So this, again, this is in my, let's leave this out in stitches pile. This is another one. I did buy this off of the secondary market, um, Not Forgotten Farm. And I I have seen this. Why I don't own it or didn't own it, I don't know. Uh, but this, to me, um, is a winter piece. And I don't have a lot. You know, once my Christmas stuff comes down, and I'm always reluctant to take that down because our winters here are so long. And, you know, the, the Christmas snowmen, the Christmas bottle bush rush trees, you know, things that I collect um, that could be up, you know, well after I take down the holiday, you know, the actual Christmas things. Um, I don't have a lot that I leave up, you know, for the winter. And that's such a dreary time up here, especially when the winter drags on. You get into February and, and into March and it's still snowing. And uh, when we originally moved up here, the middle of April, um, we moved up here in a snowstorm. So winters can be very long up here. But I love this because it, it can pass for Christmas and into the winter. Um, it's Ann Fritz, 1824, and it's a sampler. So it, it's like a given, but it's a smaller piece. Again, oh, I'm sorry, I will hold that up again, but let me look at um, the stitch count on this. Because it's not huge. And I have linen. Uh, I think this is, let's see what's called for, 30 count. Now, see, that looks much smaller than that, but it's 30 count. Stitch count is, it's not big. Oh, here, it it's right on the front. 131 by 131, so it's a square. Finish size is approximately 9 by 9. Um, it's not a huge piece, and it's just it is so cool. I put that on top of, you know, a shelf. Or, um, we don't have a fireplace in this new house. I, I did in my old one, and I, I already am missing it terribly, just, you know, for decoration purposes. But I do have a white framed fireplace that my um, late husband made for me because at the time we were married um we didn't have a fireplace in that original house uh when george and i married and robbie when rob and i got married i still lived in that house and um again well you know it, it for several reasons i could not get rid of that fireplace um, first of all, because George made it for me. Um, anything that I have from him, from memories of him, you know, are going to stay with me until I'm gone. Um, so that's, uh, we did move it here to the new house. It was stored in the old, you know, the house we just left up here in Wisconsin. Rob and I moved up here to Wisconsin several years after uh, we married. But um, so that house that we originally moved into up here in Wisconsin had a gas fireplace. And um, the mantle, and I could decorate it, and I just I loved it. Um, this house here, we are just renting. Um, we actually picked this house because of the size, where I'd have a full, you know, half of the house level, on one level is my quilt studio. 
up um, two levels. The half of that floor is um, my stitching room. And it was just ideal. <laughs> so, But it's a tri-level. Rob and I are both old, and we're finding the stairs are um, a little difficult for us. We came from a ranch. And uh, so we have found ways to do the, you know, where we leave things on one of the stairs, you know, for the next person going up can take it or the next person going down can take it. <laughs> so we combine trips and we actually have a fourth floor, which is a full basement for my laundry. So our master bedroom is up on the top level and my laundry is down in the basement. Um, yeah, I'm 72. This is getting kind of rough. But anyway, back to the fireplace. Um, so anyway, it was stored the whole time, uh, the 20 years that we lived in the ranch house here in Wisconsin. And we, of course, moved it here uh, because there is no fireplace. So it, it's just a frame, but it is like a full size, you know, fireplace size. It's white and um, it has the, my husband made a, um, uh, the base on it. He put um, like tiling on it or it looks like brick, um, and it's just the open hearth, and or, or I, I shouldn't say open it, it's got a black backing so that it looks like, you know, the back of the fireplace. And we would just go out every year and get logs, um, you know, buy chopped logs or, you know, find them in the woods and, and put real logs in there. Um, and then I would put, you know, like some flickering red lights or yellow light, you know, both, um, between the logs, we wouldn't see them, but they would, you know, look would look like fire. It would light like fire. So that's what we're going to have to try and do this year. I just have to find, you know, a spot in this house because I haven't decorated anything here yet uh, to see how the Christmas stuff is going to go up. So that's where this would go. Make a, look, a roundabout story. That's why I want to stitch this to put on my mantle. It's got a white house. It's got to go on there. So that's that. Okay, let's see, what else do we have in stash? Um, I guess the last thing I have are these four. Um, these I bought right from Burgett, um, from Wishing Thorn. And I love, I absolutely love her samplers, her reproductions. You know, being the true reproduction lover, um, these things are gorgeous. I think I had showed the two that I bought her before, but it's been several weeks. I don't remember. Um, they were kind of close to the pile of, you know, things that I wanted to show, but I wasn't quite sure. Anyway, let me show them to you again, just because, you know, they're they're well worth it looking at again. Uh, this is Alice Young Sampler 1647. And this is done for, um, uh, I believe, on her information in here. This was uh, one of the first witches that was burned during the Salem Witch Trials, uh, Alice Young, 1647. So that's what this sampler um, is commemorating. And I just thought that was something I had to do. This one I got because um, Brenda, uh, Brenda from Brenda the Serial Starter, uh, stitched this one um, with the um, flower threads and... Um, why can't I think of them? Anyway. Hold on. Judy Thompson. Judy Thompson flower thread. So I'm going to have to do this like on 32 count. I think that's the smallest you can do because the flower thread is, is so much thicker um, than regular floss. But to work on a beautiful sampler like this on 32 count for a change without all of my magnification, all of my intense lighting... Um, Brenda said the same thing. It was a pleasure. It was pleasure stitching because you're not encumbered by, um, you know, trying to see. Um, I love stitching a 40 count. 40 count is my sweet spot, um, but it's getting more and more difficult with the glaucoma that, um, it, it's hard. Um, and after a while, you know, stitching through a magnifier or stitching with all those lights, um, it gets to be a little too much especially if I'm sitting next to my husband at the time. So I think if I'm in my stitching room, that's fine. But if I'm stitching on the couch and we're trying to watch a movie or, you know, any television show, it's like he's sitting on a runway, he tells me. You know, so it, it's very true. Um, but this is going to be um, 
probably something too that'll be. This is another one that that's um, in uh, competition for the New Year's start because um, I just so badly want to try that on the 32 count, and I have all the flower sets. So there's those. Now these I also picked up. And these are so true to my heart. This is Elizabeth Hughes Sampler, 1851. And I was born in 1951. So I figured that's about as close as I'm going to get to seeing me somewhere on a sampler. But um, this is just beautiful. The colors on this are gorgeous. Let's see if I can hold it up there close enough. Without the glare where you can see it. A lot of reds and blues and reds oh, and greens. Reds, greens. And thirdly, blue are, are my favorite colors, just period, but also on, you know, in the samplers. My eye is always drawn to them, and this one is just right up my alley, so I had to get that. And then there's this one that's Harriet Charlesworth, 1822 sampler. Um, and this one kind of has the same colors, maybe a little bit more green in this one. Um, and, but I just thought this too, for some reason, it just struck me that this had to be in my collection. So that's Harriet. Now this one, uh, let's see, what's the stitch count? Not too bad, 225 by 269. So she's a mid-sized girl. Not too bad. And she's um, charted for DMC. Now Elizabeth Hughes, the one I had shown you just before, that one, uh, she does have this one also chart of her flower thread or DMC. So nice choice, you know, depending on what linen you want to work on. Um, that's great. And, and that's another thing I love about Brigitte's, is it Burgett, Burgett, um, about her charts is that she does give you these options. This one, um, there's two chartings on this, or yeah, two chartings on this. Um, it's the front side or the back side, and the front side is, you know, the, the kind of distressed, obviously, you know, the, the faded, uh, faded colors, and then the other side is vibrant colors, so she does give you both options, and there's DMC charted for both, um, and then there's wool charted for both, and there's Ginny Thompson flower thread, um, just her chart. I can't say enough about them. Uh, they're wrapped beautifully. She's so kind. She's so quick with the mailing. She sends you beautiful little things that, um, just like, you know, Country Sampler, where you get the beautiful little, you know, postcards and, you know, that with her, um, you know, a, a little extra chart on there. Or, um, just, you know, a thank you card and uh, just... Just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So that's that part of the stash. Now let's see what else I have. I think, I think actually that is it for stash. Now I have a couple of other things. Um, I've never done this, but for some reason, I have to do this today. Um, I have a designer shout out. And it's particularly, I, I do love, actually, um, it should be a combination of two, but but these are the ones I pulled. But what I'm talking about is Carriage House Samplings and Kathy Barrick, who are sisters, um, with the separate design businesses. And the reason, um, I, I should have pulled some of Kathy Barrick's, but I have so many <laughs> that I love. And I didn't want to... Um, just overwhelm you, but I had to do the carriage house samplings because um, I have accumulated um, this new um, Santa stocking. That's one of her new charts. So let's start off there so you understand what I'm talking about. But this is called Skating Santa Stocking. And she has, let's see, oh, we'll punch it a one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like eight. Maybe eight, or I'm not sure about that top one. Oh, that must be a stocking too. Maybe nine then. I only have four. But she does these stockings. And I picture these stitched and hung 
in my house, not, not just necessarily at Christmas, because this is the only one um, that's really holiday themed that I have. Um, I'm not sure there's a Noah's uh, Escaping Santa's, this one, Virtuous one. I think this is really the only one that's actually Christmas themed. But, so that one would definitely go up at Christmas on my mantle. But then we also, the ones that I have been able to accumulate, and I'm always looking for the others, um, I just, I need to have these hung in my stitching room. Um, if I get too many in my stitching room and I stitch more of them, I want to put them in my quilt room. I just love these. There's something about these. Maybe it's because of the fact that after stitching this, I could actually finish this. Um, I've sewn my entire life. I have the, the quilting business. Um, I can finish these. I can make these look professional. <laughs> um, whereas I'm not comfortable with framing pieces yet. I, I have to start small and, and work on a couple of small pieces when I have time. And build my confidence of, you know, pinning them or whatever I have to do. Watch all the videos. But I'm, it's not something I've ever done. And, and I'm very uncomfortable doing it. If I can't do it well, I stitch this piece. I don't want to ruin it, I, I guess. I guess that's a way to put it. And the pieces I dearly want framed are big pieces that took me a long, long time that I'm very attached to, and I want them to look good. So um, a lot of reasons that keeps me from finishing things. These I could finish. Um, so anyway, let me get back to the stockings. This is the embroiderer stocking. And we have all of my scattering moments are taken up with my needle. And it's Miss Sarah Hansen. She's got embroiderers written next to her. And then she has her alphabet. And under, there's a needle and spools on it. That could very easily fit in my quilt room too. But that's the embroiderers. Let's see if I have 2019 on this one. Um, so and I said this the, the first one I showed you, the Christmas room, the skating Santa. In fact, let me let me rehold that one up for you. The skating Santa is, I'm sure, this year. I don't see a um I'm sure that this is had to have come out this year. But look at all the cutesy things around him. The Christmas village on the toe, the train. Santa himself is precious. And I'm trying to look at this backwards. Oh, there's a bunny rabbit on it. Oh, goes without saying. And Christmas trees and reindeer. Love it. Love it. Uh, this is actually called Sampler Stocking. And this is, to me, a full, uh, a full sampler. Um, minus the house. We don't have a house on this. Now that I look at it, but we've got the alphabet. We've got the bird, the tree. We've got the couple. Have the beautiful flowers, the landscapes. Um, gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So that's a sampler stocking. And this one is from 2004. So that, you know, all of these, other than the first one, of these others I have bought off the secondary market. And this one, Let's see if I have a year on this one. I'm going to open this one up. This is Pennsylvania German stocking. Let me take this out of here because this is a little bit darker um, fabric and all that it's on with a darker background. I think it's going to be kind of hard to see otherwise. And I'm going to move this. This is 2004 also. What did I say the last one was? 2004. So both of these came out that year. There you go. That's much better. That's a Pennsylvania German stocking. And look at that one. Total different concept of the Stanford stocking. Um, more motifs. Um, the bird, you know, the peacock and um, flower motifs. Looks like a couple, almost like quilt blocks. The flowers, the birds. But when you compare it to this one, let's see if I can kind of hold these up. You 
can see that it's a totally different style sampler. So both of those, both of those are just. And these are, I believe all four of these are charted for um, MPI Silk. However, after doing um, my Autumn at Hawk Run, oh, I'm sorry, that chart's on the back. Autumn of Har uh, at Hawk Run Hollow and now doing the Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow, I bought all those MPI Silks when I worked at Country Sampler and had my employee discount, which was very generous. <laughs> um, so I've had those for, oh my God, 15 years. It's been so long since I worked for Jeannie. Um, but anyway, um, I have so, so many MPI silks. And the majority of these don't have that many colors. Just the new one does. The, the new one has a lot of color. Um, probably about half the amount of, of what's in one of those other two. Um, but... Um, I, I, what I'm getting at is I think the majority of them I probably have. And if the ones I don't have, um, it's not going to be too astronomical. I'll, you know, it would certainly be well worth um, investing in because working with that MPI silk on her charts. Um, and by the way, Carriage House is, you know, Hawk, Hawk Run Hollow. So um, a shout out to her um, and her sister, uh, I'll have to pull some of um, Kathy Barracks so we can, uh, you know, do a shout out with her too because I admire both of these ladies, both of their abilities, their artwork, their is their inspiration, whatever they're using to have come up with these ideas, absolutely fabulous. So that was my shout out to one of our very very special designers. Um, I do have some plans. Uh, I've got, mentioned a few of them along the way, but these I left out specifically because these will, um, in fact, this, this one is kitted except for fabric, so excuse me, I've had too much coffee today. Um, this one will be um, a new start probably this week, and uh, I can have this done hopefully by Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving is early, so I have to get on. Uh, on the ball here, but this is um, kind of an easy stitch to me. Again, I'm going to take this out so you can see it because some of these bags have a lot more glare than, than the others do. And Okay, floss is in there too, so it's kind of a tight fit. This is Sweet Wing Studio, and it's called Pass the Pie. And it's Praise the Lord and Pass the Pie. That's pretty much what we do in my house. <laughs> Thanksgiving at our house. Yes, thank you for everything we have. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our home, our puppies, our loving family, and um, pacify. <laughs> I think, I, you know, people ask you what your favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner is, you know, the actual meal, you know, what, what item is your, is your favorite item. And um, I usually have to say the dressing because that's something that, you can only have that kind of dressing on Thanksgiving. You know, I don't do that cooking uh, any other time of the year, and especially because I only cook for Rob and I. Uh, it's just the two of us, and, and, you know, right this year it'll just be one puppy. Usually there were two, but we just have the one dog left this year. And um, so I make an entire bird dressing, mashed potatoes, you know, um, sides, you know, the, the whole deal, you know, and, and pie. But stuffing is the only thing that you really, you know, don't get to have other than a Thanksgiving in our house. And I love my stuffing, so <laughs> that, that's my favorite. But second to that is pacify. And usually what Rob and I do, because it is just the two of us, um, we both love, well, I love pumpkin pie. Um, Rob's more, he, he's the traditional apple pie because he likes the double crust. So what we usually wind up doing is either buying, uh, a lot of our grocery stores here have, well, you can buy half a pie, especially at Thanksgiving time. Um, you get more flavors that, you know, even with a, a big family gathering, you know, you could get all kinds of different flavors that way. So you can do the half a pie. Sometimes you can just buy a slice of pie. We could do that. Um, either that or we just, you know, have one for Thanksgiving and one for Christmas. Or we have one in between Thanksgiving and Christmas because my husband's birthday is in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so is our wedding anniversary. So 
we have a lot of reasons to have pie, you know, during that time. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, it, I have to have this done for Thanksgiving this year. This is no doubt about it. I just have to pull, get my stash in, pull some fabric and get busy. Uh, this I'm going to say is, is going to be um, a December stitch. And I'm working right now on ornaments, but those are gifts. This is going to be ornaments, and I, I want to do all three of these. Have the fabric. I'm going to take this out of the plastic for you. This I bought as a PDF. This is Emily Call Stitching, and she's, I, I don't know that she's a fair, real, real new. I think she's, you know, had some charts out for a while, but she is kind of new to me, and I think she's getting um, some recognition, which she should have been getting all along. Um, I think she's, her, her charts are just great. Um, it's just Emily Call Stitching, I believe. I think she has an Etsy. I think that's where I got this from. Anyway, these are her three Christmas ones. Quote to Christmas, right up my alley. Once there was a quilt of snowman made with love, and I'll let it snow and trimming the tree. So there's those three. And yes, I want to stitch all three of these. I just love these. I love that they're all different shapes. I love that they're totally different concepts. Um, you know, one's a snowman, one's a tree, the, the quilt block on the other one, it's quilt blocks. Um, I just love it. I love them. So that is going to be my December. And for all of them, I pulled the floss for all of them. And, you know, it's, it's a basic Christmas colors, but kind of brightened up a little bit with that, you know, kind of peachy color in there almost. What color is that? It's DMC 3712, and these are all in DMCs. Um, but this is what I picked. I have a 36 count tin roof, and I think at least for one of these, maybe the one with the Christmas tree, I don't know. I, I kind of have, you know, I think the Christmas tree will look really great on this. Maybe the snowman, because it is a dark background. There's so much white on him. That might be a better idea for this one. Do the snowman on this. That's 36 count tin roof by Weeks. And then I have this picture of this plus sand. And this is really pretty modeled. Um, pretty modeling. Not, not very modeled, I didn't mean. But, and I think this would pick up, I mean, even the white on this. but Because there is white in all of them. But the snowman, I think, would look real good. In fact, I wanted to do the snowman first. So I think I will try that tin roof. But those are my, I, I definitely, 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 this is going in my little, you know, because it's all kitted. It's going in my grab a small thing. And this is for me. So, <laughs> you know how, you know, you get tired of stitching for other people. I shouldn't say that. But when you're stitching in things that you just keep giving away, it's time for you to stitch on something that you're keeping for yourself. Because I kind of like me. I like having my stitching surrounding me at all times. It makes me smile. It makes me happy. It makes my husband happy because he's proud of me and he always says so. He watches me stitch all the time. Um, comments, you know, he helps me pick out colors sometimes when I'm not real good at it or if I'm not seeing it real clearly, you know, it looks darker to me than it is. He's, you know, right there to help. Um, so he's really involved, and you know he can uh, he can talk floss tip, floss tube terms as good as the rest of us because you know, he hangs around me too much. So I think that we finally have hit the end today, friends. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Oh, there is a couple of things. One thing just popped into my mind. Um, I with my last video, I had put out a feeler if. Um, anybody be interested in seeing how I finish my pillows so that I don't have that raw, I, I do so, you know, the entire square. Don't leave an opening on one of the edges. I, I, I like the way, you know, I like it sewn, machine sewn all the way around. So when I make my backing, um, I make it, you know, with a slit in the back and it's two finished sides that are, you know, not raw edges, but finished sides that you're going to be stitching together with a lattice stitch, ladder stitch, and it doesn't show. Um, 
I love the way that that finishes. I can put my, you know, if I'm putting some trim in, in a seam, you know, that works out wonderful. I'm not, you know, having to stitch it on the outside. If it is stitching, you know, chenille, whatever that I'm stitching on the outside, I do that afterwards, you know, I hand sew that. But anyway, I asked a few people to be in, or anybody to be interested in seeing how I finish mine. Because <clears throat> I've seen a lot of stitchers finish theirs with, you know, just like cutting a hole in the back once, you know, they have the square sewn. Um, but then you're kind of, you know, you're stitching cotton together, you know, or, or whatever, um, together that's raw edges and, you know, they're having to put something to cover that um, to keep it secure or, or you don't want to see, you know, your whatever you've stuffed it with coming out or, you know, anyway, um, I think mine has a more of a finished look. And I was just saying that, you know, if you don't know how to finish it that way, it, it is real easy and it, I think it gives it a nicer appearance. I, I, I do have my stitching bunny back business and I'm a fanatic for finishing things um, with a professional look. Um, I take an awful lot of time um, with finishing because it's very important to me. I don't like to see raw edges uh, when I make um, project bags. I don't like to see unfinished seams inside. Um, mine are all line. I don't like to see you know things necessarily unquilted. Project bags especially, I think you need that stability um, and what you use to, you know, for um, your batting or whatever inside. Um, my project rolls um, are finished, you know, to the best of my abilities. Um, I don't rush with them. I don't, uh, I've taken some special orders. Um, that people want to use their special fabrics and you know, I, I will do that for them and um, It makes me want to um, Make them proud make them, you know happy with the result um, None of my things are made quickly. So they're usually very patient with me um, We usually contact each other back and forth and talk about you know ribbon colors and you know Do you want this inside Do you want? Um, because I want you to be happy with anything that you buy from me and I have to say that, unfortunately, uh, Stitching Bunny Bags has been slacking off. Uh, I have to say that, you know, I, I mentioned before that uh, with our move uh, this past summer in such a, a short time span where we had to move an entire house packed with 20 years of, of things and uh, move so quickly and get everything out of our house so quickly and... Uh, put the house up for sale and it, it sold, you know, the, the next day. Um, but everything was such a, a whirlwind. And I said, I'm 72. My husband will be 70 next month. Um, he's had several health issues from cardiac arrest to stroke to heart attacks to... Um, so neither one of us are, you know, I, I'm pretty healthy except for the vision thing. And, uh, but... Um, it was very, very hard on us. It was very hard. We pretty much did everything on our own, except for my friend Valerie, who helped us as much as she could. Bless her heart. She helped us pack things. She helped us unpack things. She came to the house several times with us, um, you know, in the process where we were moving things before the actual movers were able to bring the furniture. We were moving everything we could that we had boxed and carrying boxes up and down. And, and this, this is three... Um, actually four, four flights of, of stairs between the floors. And um, so it has taken a long time to get the house together, um, unpack everything just because of us being exhausted, being us physically beating up, you know, just beat up with bruises and soreness and um, having not slept for <laughs> well for, you know, a month at least um, with all the transition and uh, so um, by the time I finally got my quilting studio set up um, now I'm facing the holidays and uh, we are doing better you know we're, we're slowly coming out of it we're slowly uh, regaining our energy um, the heat, hot weather is over we moved the hottest time of the year neither one of us can handle heat <laughs> so just everything uh, piled up um, I do have several project rolls partially finished 
I'm working on the handwork, which is the slowest thing. Um, normally, I have a sale the first of the month. And the last couple of months, I just couldn't do it. I didn't have enough stock. I had several special orders that I promised to friends. And um, those took precedence. So while the shop had been empty for the time it had been empty, I thought I would just let it go that way until I was ready to reopen. Um, I was hoping to have some new items, and I'm just pretty much just keeping up with what I, I had. I, I do have some project bags that are fall and Christmas. I have some Christmas stockings that will go back into the shop. Um, what I'm probably looking at right now, uh, what I'd like to do um, is have a sale during November. It depends on how this handwork goes. If not, it's going to have to be December 1st, uh, which squeezes in between Thanksgiving, our anniversary, and my husband's birthday. Um, so that's the situation right now. Um, I'm trying my best. Uh, I don't want this to be a drudgery. I love doing this, but if I'm tired, if I'm my hands are sore, I, if I, you know, I can't walk up the stairs anymore. It's not enjoyable. So um, it's getting better. And uh, let I want you to know that um, if it's something that you really have been waiting for, uh, one of my project roles, if I can uh, accommodate you with the things that I have made here, if you have a special order with special fabric, uh, you can contact me through Etsy, Etsy and we'll see what we can do. Um, just realize that there is a timeline. Um, nothing is coming up too quickly. So there is that. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, well. Oh, the finishing. We already talked about that. What I'm, I'm going to do uh, with the finishing uh, little tutorial, I'd like to do that separately. Because um, not everybody's, you know, everybody's at a different stage. Um, I can sew till the cows come home, but I can't frame. Um, some ladies uh, can frame and, you know, don't own a sewing machine. So everybody's in a little different spot, and everybody is not going to want to see, you know, how to finish one of my little pillows. But because there are some ladies that are interested, I'd like to show you. It's, it's easy enough. Um, it'll give you a nice... I think a crisper finish look and there's I know there's a lot of tutorials out there but I just want to show you what I do so anyway that's going to be a separate video and I will get to that very shortly um I have some things out that need to be finished and um I think we'll just go through one of those and just you know uh block out the times where I'm actually showing just show you the steps but actually show you you know from start to finish um in as quick of a period of time that I can on a video so that's in the in the coming too, and I, I promised I would do that for you. So I think that's just about, I've covered everything. I think you guys are probably tired of listening to me, and um, you probably want to move on to another floss tube, or hopefully you were stitching, uh, got something accomplished while I was yakking at you. And um, I just want to thank you for spending, you know, an hour and a half with me if you, you know, sat through this entire thing. Um, you stitchers mean the world to me. I I, um, I have just felt that I have been so enriched with so many new friendships, even if it's just online, even if we haven't met in person. We've, if we can converse through, you know, your comments and me answering you, or or you, you know, want to text me. I, you know, my information um, is all available online. You know, my my Facebook page, my floss tube. Um, with my new camera, my new phone, um, I'm going to uh, also work on um, figuring out how to, um, uh, what am I trying to think of? Oh, um, audit, uh, or ed I shouldn't say audit, edit uh, my videos and get some show notes in there that, I, you know, I can put things in there, links for you uh, to certain things. And so that's another winter project I have that, Hopefully, I can start being a little bit better at this. Um, so, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I want to tell you again, I love you. I appreciate you. Um, if you're a new viewer and you like what you saw, please um, consider subscribing. You know, ring the little bell and you'll know when I have a new video posted because God only knows. I never know when I'm going to get around to a new video. So, um, the minute I know, you'll know. Um, 
when I, I get it uploaded. And uh, in the meantime, um, if, uh, if it's before or after, anyway, um, I want you to think about having a blessed Thanksgiving. I hope you get to spend it with family and friends, loved ones. Um, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Be thankful for the talents you have, for the love you have for your needlework, and for this wonderful community um, of stitchers and uh, community of floss tubers that, that are willing to share uh, their time with us and um, just keep us stitching. So until we meet again, um, happy stitching. And if you can, stitch every day. Love you guys. Bye-bye.